case I say we find out who this bus driver is and uh, put this guy on permanent. I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe the bus drivers, maybe our problem all throughout August in trading crude oil was, uh, was the regular bus drivers were on vacation and so we were just getting the substitutes because they sure didn't know, couldn't seem to figure out what direction they were going. But anyway, we've got a much better bus driver now. And uh, for those of you that are trying to study this, um, this Apex MVP and get this nailed down, um, I would suggest that you print, either shoot and print a, a copy of this whole thing. You might have to do crude oil in sections, but my goodness, you got a lot of apex formations and you can take your time and study those and how they they work. The um, I think we got our first one way back here somewhere. So all of these, provided they had a green apex, I mean a green MVP to go with them, these were all add-on spots if you were a real trend trader. And so when it starts up like this, I think one of the big questions you have to ask yourself is, okay, well, I mean, you know at some point that it's going to stop going up, but any market that you trade using the apex indicators, you're going to find that when um, any market gets to two stand, two of these uh, deviation levels, so I'm on the, I'm, wait, you can see this better, I guess, with a, um, with an arrow. I'm on this, I'm going to look at this 10 minute chart because it's real easy to see here. On this 10 minute chart, I'll even pull this out so we've got a a bigger picture here. But settlement is right here, the big, uh, the fat cyan line right here. And the this solid blue is is plus one deviation level, and this is the plus two deviation level. When you have a market that bolts like this, and travels that far, when you get to that two standard deviation, um, I would be taking my profit for sure. Now you could have taken this right to the top of that um, range channel. So I think you're beginning to see why I put such a big store in these range channels because the crude oil bus drivers are, they're, they're very respectful of those. And when it blows through one like this, if you are an add-on uh, trader, if you trade one contract and looking for a place to add on to another one, when it blows through, that's a good place to add on to another one. But up at two deviation levels, you should expect it to back off. And um, so you could have taken this from the deviation level back down to the half right here, or three quarters or whatever, that's a half right there, um, for some more ticks. There were just a tremendous amount of opportunities here. Guess what brought all this on? Look at the volume here. Look at this volume. This is about double what a high volume day has been for the last two or three months. So this is a tremendous amount of volume. This is the kind of volume that Brent usually trades with. And we don't see this very often in West Texas. So, and, and that's what we trade. We trade the WTI, which the symbol is CL, but it stands for West Texas Intermediate. And that's traded, that's the North American oil market. But also when you, I like to use these 30 minute candles just for a ballpark because what do we know about the big traders and, 
and people that use this, uh, you know, they're high frequency traders, they don't make any decisions, they put their trades in for the top of the hour and the, the bottom of the hour, and the top of the hour and the bottom of the hour. And they're big, big traders, but if the market is, any market is going to change or change direction, those half hour candles can be very telling and if you've been in a trade for instance when if if you did take this off of this big magnet down here and you get up here it it's you've had the trade on for an hour and it's doing nothing but but wonderful good things for you then to stay in the trade beyond this you need to see some indication see this this right here, this doji effect, this is an indecision. It's trying to decide if there's a, what causes that is a lot of these contracts that made, made this profit right here, they're selling off. Some of them take their profit and then they get back in for it to go again. But it's the volume. Daryl, one of the things that one of the many, many, many things I have learned from Daryl that was really an aha for me, because he keeps saying, what moves the market? There is only one thing that moves the market, and it isn't, it isn't news, it isn't this, it isn't what people think, it isn't, in, it isn't anything. One thing and one thing only, and that is orders. And uh, boy, is uh, that just makes so much sense to me. So I hope that you can kind of keep that in mind too, because when there are no orders, nothing is going to happen. But wow, this is super volume, over six hundred thousand, which is that's substantial. So we shall see what next week brings. Um, this may very well have have uh, been the last of this downward push into the basement for the for crude oil and the energy uh, sectors. All of the commodities across the board, whatever they are, in the grains and in the uh, metals and everything has been just uh, copper. Uh, these things have been pounded into the ground and uh, crude oil is no different because it is also a deliverable commodity. commodity. So um, there are a lot of uh, very experienced commodity traders that are thinking, you know, how far down can be down be, and they're they're kind of looking for this to improve a little bit. So we'll see what um, what Monday brings. The um, brain trust that's been meeting in Jackson Hole should be through. I don't know uh, if they're going to make any you know overwhelming statements after this. I think I think basically they go there just to dither around. Yeah, there. That's what I call them. That's the brain trust. Um, and uh, and next next Monday, there's not too much news. Uh, Europe has banking holiday. I think uh, one day next week. I think it's on Monday. I'm not sure. So when those kinds of things occur, uh, then early in the morning, if the uh, Europeans are not trading. I try to pay attention to the um, the banking holidays in London and in Germany because those are the big two biggest European markets. Um, and since I don't trade at night, uh, but some of you do, then you need to pay attention to what's happening in uh, in Asia, in Japan, Singapore. So. Um, I think that's all. I'm going to be around for a little while. So if anybody has any uh, any questions or anything you want me to go over, this is this has really been um, uh, it's been a uh, challenging week. 
So if there's anything that you want to go over, I would suggest you use your time to um, make yourself a list of the, the things that you keep putting off, like, uh, gee, I, I need to go back and review how this indicator really works. There's all kinds of information on the website. So be sure you you spend the next couple, three or four days trying to get your everything organized, your charts all ironed out so they, they're easy for you to use and you can read them very clearly. You're not looking for every trade and when you take every trade, remember, you're never going to get the best entry and the best exit. That just flat is not going to happen. You're looking for 60, maybe if you're really lucky, 70% of that move. And uh, that's enough to make a very good living if, uh, if you can just get that nailed down. And you don't need every little tick and whatever that comes along. But if you don't get the entry right, you have no trade whatsoever to manage. You might as well put a fireman's hat on because you are now managing a crisis. Um, think that's all I can think of right now. Uh, gold may be coming up a little bit. All the commodities are. Uh, the euro is, which trades opposite the US dollar. Those are, are right in keeping as they normally are. And the VIX is hovering right around uh, 27, which is still, it's a bit of an elevated VIX, so we'll see what uh, these indices are going to do. They certainly have been trading in a range, except for TF. And TF, normally, it has not been the case this summer, but normally TF will lead those indices. Just keep in mind, it's small cap, so it's, it's going to be a little more volatile. And so, everybody, I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a safe one, and I'll see you all Monday, and we'll be ready to go. And this has my, been my view from my world in Apex Land. <laughs>